Hi everyone, this is going to be a tips video for no-move games in Botswana, or for a no-move game where you land up in Botswana. Uh, because I know not everybody's going to play Botswana like me, but the background here is that I'm a gifted amateur at GeoGuessr at best, and, and less than that at making YouTube videos, so take that for what it is. But I've gotten really into just learning specific countries and getting really good at them. It's really fun to pull out great guesses with very little evidence. And Botswana is great for that. Um, I, I will shout out that like I think Zig Zag's Australia series has really inspired me behind this too. Um, and I just want to share how you can know where you are in Botswana because it's so big, it looks very similar to a lot of people. You can get some pretty bad guesses even if you know the country right off the bat. Um, Botswana, lovely African country, high GDP per capita for the region, you know, and uh, it seems like a nice place to visit. But when I say high GDP per capita, low GDP because not many people. Uh, a lot of empty space. If you look at the coverage, limited coverage, um, and so that does allow you to get to know it fairly well. It's not like Madagascar where you can just memorize all the locations, but you can start to understand where you are a little bit better. It's got three main large cities with coverage, although a large city in Botswana has 50,000 people and it looks rural for other places, so keep that in mind. Um, Mound looks quite different. Uh, but Francistown and Gaborone can look very similar, and they're quite far apart. So if you want to tell them apart, keep watching the video. Uh, I'm going to cover four different kind of Botswana-ness uh, categories. The first is just, am I in Botswana? I'm doing Battle Royale. I want to quickly click, yes, I'm in Botswana. And uh, that's pretty easy. It's pretty recognizable. There's a bronze tier of just what general area of Botswana might I be in. Silver tier of, okay, exactly, am I in the northwest on this road? Maybe, am I in the southeast? It's it's not perfect, but you can get quite close with not that much effort. And then a gold tier of, well, what I've managed to do a couple times now with no moving is get five perfect guesses, essentially. Um, even though uh, you, you might have no signs. The signs are in English, but you usually have no signs. You have no car meta. You have nothing like that to help you. So I'm going to start with just, am I in Botswana? And for th most people, this should be pretty easy. It's very flat, very dry. Even though these pictures may look different to me now, um, they all look like flat, dry, southern African uh, locations, or at least southern hemisphere locations, because the sun will be in the north. Um, some people might confuse this with Australia. If we go in to look around, um, Botswana and South Africa will have yellow lines on the outside. Australia won't. This can look a fair bit like some South African locations, but usually for South Africa, they will have Gen 2 coverage in these locations, which is that circle around the bottom of the car or a circle at the top of the screen, and all of Botswana is covered by this white car here um, and Gen 2 coverage. Sorry to do that. Let's close that tab. All right, uh, similar here. So going back to the slides, that should get you that you're in Botswana. Um, for a bronze level, uh, we're going to go into a bit more detail. Now first, I will say there is one Gen 2 coverage area in Botswana when you're playing the Botswanese map. And if I've already told you that all of the Botswana coverage is with a Gen 3 camera, you should be able to guess that the Gen 2 coverage is literally in South Africa on this very bottom left corner here. Um, so we'll go into that last, but I wanted to divide it into essentially four categories here. And they're really rough categories. All of the West in orange is deserty and sandy. So it's it looks dry and it looks like you could leave a footprint in it. Uh, if I go here, we already closed one tab that had that kind of coverage, but you can see along the side we've got a lot of white sand here. Um, pretty dry. This one, uh, we start to have more grass. If you remember the first slide that I had to close because my computer can only take so much, uh, that was very deserty. Um, and you would have been able to see footprints in there, and we'll see some slides like that again. Uh, yellow can be a lot harder. This is the probably most populated area of Botswana. It looks like there's grass and there's trees, and it's sometimes hills too. Um, but uh, generally, if it, you've got you know short but a lot fair bit of grass, it doesn't look like a desert. It looks like a prairie. Um, you're probably somewhere in the middle, maybe guess near Gaborone. Uh, for an example of that, let's um, slowly load this tab here. Uh, I wonder if maybe I should do this. Can't I can't do this every time, like this here. Uh, so something like this here, 
where we've got short grass on the sides, trees everywhere, and we might have some rolling hills in this kind of uh, green area. And so then we've got blue. Blue can be quite distinctive. You're going up to Chobe National Park. Here you have long grass and um, long grass, lots of trees that are quite green, and the road angle for almost the entire duration is, is quite distinctive, and we'll figure out how to find what the road angle is too. So once you see very long grass on the sides of the road, it can look a little different, but you probably know that you're on this long blue road that goes all the way up to the border with Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Namibia. There's a four country border up there. Finally, on the eastern side of, sorry, the eastern side of the country, we've got these, again, deserty, very dry coverage, but here, uh, you're not gonna leave a footprint in it. That's the best way I can say to uh, tell the two apart. It's more rocky, it's hard packed earth. Um, it's not sandy like the west side of the country is. And then the last thing I want to do is point out the Gen 2 coverage, if people aren't aware of that. Um, but that might have to wait because we're going too slow. All right, so next up, we're going to go to silver. We're going to break down these regions even more. Um, and you should be able to get a 1500 with a couple tries if you can break it down into these regions. So on the west side, all of that sandy area. Um, first, at the, at the bottom, that's where it's the most desert-like. So this border here with South Africa and this middle um, path, it's going to be red-looking soil. It's going to be quite white and quite sandy. Um, so if we come here, we've got a very deserty area, as we can see. Uh, a few cows, that's nice to see, but um, sand on the side of the road. If you're close to a town, you'll see a lot of footprints. If not, you're just going to see sandy, deserty looking area. Um, and for most of the this region, it's going to be pretty red. When you get down to the southern border here at the, at the tip, it'll become white and it'll become more recognizable because it follows the border, so it curves a lot. Most of this deserty area is very straight, which is good and useful. Um, next up, if we can close that, uh, we get to the, the next category which is going to be more grass-like, but still we've got sand and stuff. All of the locations look a bit different. It tends to be very wintry coverage, so dark and dreary, a lot of leaves have fallen off of these trees. Um, and so if I go back to the map here, um, we'll see what coverage there is for that. Uh, we might not be able to, um, just because it's going to take too long. So close that. Um, but Almost all of this, and all the way up in Damon, is this usually white sandy areas, um, winter coverage. It looks uh, very dry and inhospitable, but it doesn't look deserty like the orange areas at the bottom. Um, and Mound is one of the cities with a fair bit of coverage. You will start to notice uh, what that looks like when you look for the white sand. This red road is very distinctive, and so this is the one we're on now. It doesn't have a very good road on the sides. Um, it has a power pole that runs along the west of it for the entire way, all the way from that ring road that goes around Botswana all the way up to, uh, I believe it's Angola. Um, no, it's the Namibian panhandle, my bad. But uh, we've got a lot more grass now on the sides, but we still have this dusty trail that follows the road. And this, this follows the road the whole way up. And if we look back at this map, this red line here, we're talking about a distance, I'm sure, well, probably about the diameter of Italy at the center. Like, th this is going to give you a, a good guess if you can get this road, but uh, it's, it's quite a big area, even though it seems like, really, you're just going to teach me about one road in the entire world to learn? Yeah, this is a long road. Um, and so once you get this, you'll often be dropped here in Botswana. You can recognize the power poles, you can recognize the dirt tracks that go along the side of the road and we'll get into how you can get even closer than that. But now we get into the trickier bits. So this, all the this stuff in the middle, purple, green, and light blue, those are trickier. Purple is going to be close to the border often with South Africa. You're going to get a lot more hills, and you're going to get this short red grass. So if we look at it here, um, sure to load. There we go. Um, here we go. This is like really short red grass or short white grass on red soil, as you can see. Uh, it'll probably let me move it around in 10 seconds. 
Um, and not everywhere will be hills, but the closer you get to the border, often you're going to see big hills. Um, I guess that's just a tree, not a hill. Um, but it, the grass is quite distinctive, and it lets you know that you're somewhere south of Gaborone and close to the South African border. Um, green is probably the hardest because it has the most coverage, and there's just a lot of people living here because it has grass and trees and hills and all the things that people are interested in. Um, so if I try to get a characteristic uh, picture of this, this is the highway just north of Gaborone, Gaborone, I should say. Um, so we can see this taller grass, um, larger trees on the sides. I don't know if I'll see a hill in the distance here, but there can often be hills in this area. As you can see, though, so much of Botswana is just flat. Um, and this is one of the major highways in Botswana. Like I said, it just looks like kind of the prairie that you might see somewhere else. The soil, if anything, is going to be a light brown. Um, and so it can be hard to tell apart, but usually if you see something that just looks like a pretty normal flat place to live, you can guess somewhere in the center, maybe close to Gaborone. Um, if we go up to the top with the light blue, now we're talking, um, we start to get less grass the further up we go. Uh, it starts to get fall coverage all around Francistown, and when I say fall coverage around here, I often mean that we have kind of almost red on the trees. Uh, it can be red soil, but it can also be white soil around here. Um, and there's a lot fewer trees on the lower road, and there's a lot more trees on the northern road, and they look very fall colors. Here's a hill. Nice Botswanese hill. Um, so that's these two lower roads as they split. They tend to have very few trees, um, and sim similar to what we looked at. And this higher road, which I won't show, has a lot of trees, very fall coverage. Um, starting to get pretty dry, though, because it's dry along the eastern side. It all depends where you are. Um, this dark blue road we've already seen still looks totally the same. And then this pink road, I wanted to show a few more locations, but might not have the computer for it. Um, but again, super dry, but not the kind of thing you can put your foot in. Um, here's the tall grass. So we're going up to Chobe to see the elephants. And here's a super dry area. Um, it's going to look like this anywhere along that eastern border. Um, once you pass Francistown, it starts to get really dry, and if you go out far to the east, there's some national parks, and they're very, very dry, just like this. Okay, so that's a bit more detail. Um, and if you can break it down into these colors, and then if you just guess between Francistown and Gaborone, whenever you're in a big developed area, probably guess Gaborone, but it's often Francistown, um, you should do well, you should easily be able to get over 15 thousand in a normal Botswana game and you should be able to beat somebody in a distance battle royale game if you're lucky. Um, finally we'll go to gold and so this is getting a little silly and a little uh, addicted to this one map but um, here's a few things. The first thing that you're going to want to do for sure uh, you're going to want to get good at is here. So I'm, I'm now in GeoGuessr and uh, one of the things to do in Botswana a lot so first I'm going to notice that I've got this dirt track on the sides, and I've got a power pole going along the west. I've got nice grass and trees, but it still looks quite sandy. So I know that I am on, hang on, where are we? This road here, going up to that Namibian panhandle. So I don't know where I am on it, though. And like I said, it's a huge road, diameter of Italy, let's call it. And so what you do is you zoom all the way out, and then you point straight towards north, and now I know the angle of the road. So if I look at this road, the first thing I'll see, a lot of Botswanese roads are quite straight because it's a flat country. Most of this road is going northwest, right? Northwest at the top, northwest at the bottom. So to get a northeast angle like this, I have to be somewhere in the middle. And you can just trace the road up, uh, and then you zoom in when you think you might have found something. So this looks pretty promising. This looks like the same angle as the road. You can even put it against the edge of the road and say, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Um, I might even quit there because it looks so good, but uh, if there's another spot like this, this looks good too. Um, and just using this will get you closer. You can see that there's a few spots at about this angle here, so it's probably a safe guess. 
We'll guess and we'll see. We are 510 meters away. So if you don't use this trick on the road and if you don't know how to find this road, uh, there's no way you're getting 500 meters away in Botswana, right? And so that's a super useful trick. You're going to use that all over Botswana with these straight roads in order to find out where you are in order to pinpoint guesses well enough to get gold. You have to be able to do that trick. Next, Gaborone versus Francistown. The main difference is Gaborone, down here in this whole area close to South Africa, you're going to see a lot of hills. You're going to see hills south in the border town of Labats. That's a pretty typical one if you ever get thrown there to try to guess Labats with hills all around you. But you're going to see hills off in the distance from Gaborone. Francistown has one hill. And so I am going to go into a new GeoGuessr game with that one hill. And I'm going to show it to you. The truth about Francistown is you can just memorize the hill. Uh, again, sorry, computer slow. Uh, it has two, I guess, radio stations, radio towers on top of the hill. And you can see it from a lot of Francistown. And if you see a big hill in the distance with two radio towers on top of it, you should guess Francistown, especially if you don't see any other hills around. Because, you know, people like putting radio towers on a hill. But this here is Francistown. And I can even show you exactly where the hill is. So we zoom into Francistown. It's loading OK. Um, the Francistown Hill is right here. It's under phase V3. It's above the town, uh, the main part of the town. And right now, it is more or less directly to my north. So if it's more or less directly to my north, I know that I'm probably somewhere on this road or this road. Well, I can tell you exactly because I can point straight down, zoom out, and point to north. And then, I don't know, probably this road. Perfect, 100%. Love that guess. Uh, compare that to Gaborone. We're here. Uh, I'm going to, oh, well, I, I don't know, actually, if this is Gaborone or Francistown. Here's the next challenge. So we're in somewhere that looks built up. It has nice houses. I'm going to tell you that this is a nice house. Um, you know, beware what you might hear somewhere else. Uh, and I'm going to start thinking I'm in Gaborone or Francistown. I'm going to look around. I'm going to see a hill down there. And not only am I going to see a hill down there, I'm going to see a hill with two radio towers. So I know I'm in Francistown, and I know it's to my north. It's to the north of most of the town, so that's not surprising. But sometimes you'll get put north of the hill, too. There's, there's a lot of coverage around here. Uh, I'm not going to do any time for a better guess. There I am. I'm in Francistown. Uh, I'm laughing. The next one, I'm going to get dropped in a different city in Botswana. I'm going to wait for it to load. Look, we've got Bordergate Mall and Choppers. We have actual signs in English. It's nice. Rare that you get signs in Botswana. And look, I see a hill. I don't see any radio towers on top of it. Not only do I see one hill, I see another hill beside it. And if I look around, what's that off in the distance to my north? Oh, if it's, it's rolling hills all over the place. So here's where I think, okay, I am not in Francistown. Far more than one hill. I must be in Gaborone. I scroll down. I don't spend much time. I guess... And I trick you because I'm not technically in Gaborone, I'm in Tlokwang, which is a, a suburb. Um, but you just learn to be okay with guessing uh, or getting Tlokwang. You can also be put here in Fakalane. Um, it's fine. It's a good close guess. It's over 4,000 points. Okay. Uh, next, I've only stuck to the, um, to the paved roads. And here's a, a true part is that if you think that you've learned enough from this video, you can turn it off now. But I'm going to go further, tell you how to get gold. Um, we're going to go into some of the common dirt roads if we can. Um, and so the first one I want to do is just near Gaborone, actually, because uh, the only time you're ever going to be put on a tiny little red dirt road, like I said, kind of light brown dirt is what's in this area. Uh, if you're around here, you're going to think that you're somewhere in the middle of the darn country, and you're not. You're actually just west of Gaborone. I get dropped there quite a bit. Uh, it kind of looks like it's still part of the city, but a lot of this area here is actually just dirt roads. There I am, one of these things. Um, hey again, I'm going to cut there.
the rest of this isn't really that important, and my voice started uh, breaking up on the mic for the first uh, cut. But uh, I was going to point out a few of these dirt roads that are in the west are really hard to tell apart. Just remember to use the angle. There is a very characteristic road out by the Thule Game Reserve, which has these deep ruts in it. It's a long road, if you get to know that one, can be handy. Uh, and a few special locations, like Sedilla Hills, which don't look like anything else in Botswana here in the northwest. Big rocky area with a like vacuum powder road out, very distinctive. Um, anytime you see water, you're almost certainly at the Chobe River at the very northern end here where these four countries meet. Same if you see elephants, which is a fun reason to play. Um, and if you're really trying to get into this and figure out the way to determine two very similar looking roads, which often happens, see if one has a power pole, one doesn't, that's a really useful thing, and uh, see if the car is going uh, north in one direction and south in the other road, so uh, that can be helpful too. But that's it for me. Probably not going to do this again, but uh, thanks for listening if you did. Bye.